Hello my friends and welcome back to The Witcher 3, the Hearts of Stone DLC. In yesterday's video, we continued to work on scenes from a marriage where we explored the painting and viewed scenes from Iris' marriage with Olgird. And at the end of our video, we did pause right before this one. We've got her father here, who I'm assuming is gonna be holding the marriage contract. Not quite. Memory's still incomplete. And Olgird, who is drinking. So that's how he whiled away the long winter evenings. Furthermore, it is agreed that Iris shall be accorded the respect she is owed, that you shall heed her counsel and requests, and... Get to the point, Father. My patience runs thin. Gladly. On Iris's request, I declare this marriage null and void. Oh. You vowed to remain with me, till death do us part. And I've held to my vow. The old geared I married is no more. Breaking a word once given does not come that easy. Believe me. You shall stay here, forever. Enough! You will not command us. You will... <gasps> oh! Father! Father! No! Servant! Take this carcass and feed it to the beasts! Well, now she's really gonna wanna stay with you, dude. I mean, I notice he's got the scars on his head now. Then Von Everick ceased to be human. Though he still loved his wife. No, he merely remembered that he should love her. Let's go upstairs. Oh goodness, this is... Oh my. She wants to leave him and has her father come help her. I'm guessing when he said you're gonna stay here forever, that was kind of like him cursing her. And then kills her father right in front of her and... I... Oh, this marriage. Oh, making a deal with a demon is not good. Just <laughs> how did you ever think that was going to end well? Who is this? You see, it looks like a girl, a woman, a lady. Oh, here's another scene, it looks like. I remember. We spent much time together here, the three of us. In silence. We'll take our places, the same as then. <gasps> you do the rest. Ooh, the caretaker, you see it? <laughs> I'm guessing Olgird sent them all. The caretaker was to keep her here forever. So she could never leave. Oh, and she was in mourning. Oh, over her father, right? Single place setting. No others on the table. Oh. Claw scratches. From you, kitty? Small bowl for soup, maybe. A large clay bowl. Oh, no, I thought there was red. What's this over here? Animal hair. Hmm. A platter. Hmm. Hmm, is right. Creepy caretaker. Perfect match. Yeah, that seems right. Large bowl for the doggy. I think this was yours. And then small bowl for the kitty, right? There we go. There we go. You 
you actually ate from these bowls? Of course not. I already told you, we're not animals. But the caretaker would set them out all the same, as ordered. Another monstrosity. I begged you to stop this. Those two are too, too many as it is. The dog and cat keep you company. This one will protect you, care for the house, no matter what happens. Before I wished to know what was going on in that head of yours, I thought perhaps I could help. Now, I care not the slightest what you think or how you feel. I... feel nothing. Just as I no longer know if I still hate you. Go, Olgird. I want you out of my sight. Olgird von Everick failed to understand we'd never be able to replace him. His spectre now casts a shadow over Lady Iris's every remembrance. Oh. We're almost at our journey's end. What's there? Iris von Everick's greatest fear. Curators of Nightmare's Achievement. So it's not a girl, it's it's Olgird. Oh, it wasn't like a dress, like I was thinking, it's his uh, wraparound shirt best thing. Go to the parlor where her greatest fear, I'm guessing her greatest fear might be Olgird? I keep saying Olgird and Olgird. I keep pronouncing it multiple ways as, as I want to do. Let's save. Face Iris von Everick's greatest fear. Well, let's um, loot first, see if there's any new books or anything. To Santa Duchy out of Tales of Fantasy and Wonder. Have I not read this one? I feel like I've read that one. Oh, here we go. My dearest wife, letters from Old Gear to Iris. Were I only as skilled with words as I am with my blade, especially now, when an icy void grips my heart, I see how you look at me, and I see you wither. I cannot help you, but I believe I can cease harming you. This letter and this rose are my farewell. May you live in health, and remember but the good times, Olgird. didn't go well at all, did it? <laughs> you wonder the delusion you'll complete your tasks. Live happily ever after. It can happen. A witcher shall Stop getting hit by that stuff that he's spewing. Ugh. You 
one thing to do the you complete your tasks. Live happily ever after. Okay, got one down. Only four more to go. Holds no surprises. Come on, come to me. Hi. I want to fight it. Oh no, five more to go. Jeez the least. You wonder You know, Olgir, this doesn't help with you mocking me. one-shot of me. The Witcher shall soon be buried. The sky is not good. No, it's not good. Him. Wait, I want to talk. Not here. Not in this place. I'm sorry. I mistook you for another. For Olgird? I thought he'd returned. To me. What are you? A ghost? An illusion? I am sadness. Well, before we go on and, and question Iris, uh, I don't know how I'm going to put it together, but dang, that fight was really, really, really annoying. Like, the first four, I could get down pretty well, but then the last two, I'd be, like, full health and just get one-shotted left and right. I... Oh, I, I, I don't know that I'm going to make you sit through 40 minutes of me trying to beat that boss or bosses rather, but I feel like it was just a matter of it wanted to be me to be good at like counterattacking and parrying and like, you know, the part where you dodge and then immediately hit it and then stun it. And then you, it being the monster. So you parry and then you kick it, which stuns it and then lets you attack it a whole bunch. And you know, that part of this gameplay that I'm really not good at. <laughs> so I may put, you through a few of the uh, awful battles, but I may probably just bring you in at the very end of the last one because it was really, it was really, it, it was, it was, I'm embarrassed about how, how bad I am at that, but I'm aware I'm not good at that gameplay. I don't know why either. I'm, I, I just, I'm not. So anyway, now, now that that explanation is over, uh, we've met before Iris. 
Saw you before, but you weren't yourself. And I saw you again in your memories. We've met. I don't recall. I had bad dreams. That is all I know. I've come for the rose Olgird gave you. I've come for the violet rose Olgird gave you. On the day we saw one another for the last time, I dried it and placed it in our chamber at my bedside. I lay there for days, staring at it, until at last it crumbled into dust, as did I soon after. So, the rose is gone? Not from this world. Look, you buried my body and the flowers bloomed once more. And I... I was held in a deep, dark sleep. Only now have I awoken, just like my beautiful rose. When you placed the sketchbook on my grave, I remembered learning to draw my husband's face. Tell me, how is Olgird? Healthy? Does he fare well? Even after all this, you still care about him. Wow. I mean, maybe she remembers Olgird as he was. He does have a powerful enemy. He does. But I feel like it's an enemy of his own making, maybe? Your husband's got a powerful enemy. Gontaro Dim. Know the name? I curse the day I first heard it. Who is he? And how'd he step into your lives? It's my fault. It was for me Olgird summoned the Man of Glass. And it was my fault he wished for riches, then immortality for us both. Olgird will best Odin, won't he? Now tell me, how is my husband? Huh, he doesn't deserve your concern. He pretends to be happy, but he isn't. Olgir's doing all right. Uh, I don't think he's doing okay. Um, it's her husband, so it is kind of her concern. So I'm gonna go with he pretends to be happy, but isn't. Your husband hunts out ever stronger sensations. He tempts fate, because at heart, he's unhappy. At heart, he is stone. So nothing has changed. And did... did Olgird mention me? What did he say? Not much, but I didn't ask about you. He just sent me to retrieve the rose. The rose? The last I have left of him? His last gift? The rose is more than a memento, isn't it? Yeah, kind of kind of getting that vibe. Got a feeling the rose is important to you, more than a memento. I remember so little. Yet when I think of my rose, I begin to recall what was. The world around me turns real, and I... My eyes open wide and I recognize things remember who I am and who I was. Friend once told me about a case like this. Could be strong emotions that bind you to the rose. Feelings we witchers call pins. They're what keeps you in this world. Like an insect pinned in a collection case. Horrible. Need to be honest. If I take the rose, you might cease to exist. As might the world you built around you. And what will happen then? Shall I be free of the suffering, the sadness? Is it the void that awaits? I don't know. I don't wish to suffer any longer. 
but I fear there will be cold and darkness until there is nothing at all. Hmm. Now we need the rose. We're gonna take the rose. And if I take the rose, it's the only way that she can be free from this area, right? But then she, she basically dies. But she's been dead for a while, and she's just been stuck, it seems like. Oh, let's ask for it. I need the rose. Will you give it to me? It's so fragile. Look, the petal edges have turned crimson as they were on the day I received it. The one thing missing is the single drop of dew which slid down the leaf when I took the rose in hand. Or was it blood? Because I pricked my finger. I can't remember. You know, I never did read the letter from Orgird. I didn't have to. And I needn't have kept the flower he left me. I've come to a decision. I shall give you the rose. Our service thus ends. Thank you, stranger, for freeing us. Before we go, some advice. Beware of the one called the Man of Glass. Stand in his way, and you'll meet a fate worse than death. Seek salvation in glass that can't be broken. Glass that can't be broken? So long. I'll remember you, Iris von Everek. That no longer matters. Farewell. More Iris Von Emmerich updates and the Black Cat and Dog updates and scenes where marriage is completed. Well, let's look at all that stuff. I liked that quest. I hated that last boss fight. I hated it. Oh, that was awful. I, that was just difficult to just be difficult. There, the mechanics, I, like I said, I'm not very good at parrying and I, like I can roll and dodge out of the way, but um, the parrying where you kick and block I'm just not it's not my strength I'm aware of it and that's kind of was my biggest problem so once I get over that it'll be fine so Iris so let's look for what was it black cat and dog okay well let's read Iris von Everick first so Iric Iric <laughs> Iris von Everick's memories first recalled happy days spent in Olgard's company and then became darker and darker in fact even the sunnier ones had an ominous cloud hanging over them an uneasy feeling something horrible would soon happen Iris von Everick had been a sensitive woman and noted subtle changes in her husband's behavior she had lacked the courage however to delve into their cause Olgard von Everick's heart had turned to stone, turning him into a monster. Iris had, Iris hated what her husband had become, but could not stop loving him. The couple endured together in a painful cohabitation until Olgard ended it by abandoning his wife. Iris never came to terms with their separation, could not, in fact, even bring herself to read her husband's farewell letter. So what, like, did he, she want to divorce him first and then he abandoned her, therefore just... Uh, I, I just... Hmm. Yet the violet rose he gave her upon leaving, she kept making it a focal point for all the longing and love raging in her soul. When she died, these unresolved feelings kept her spirit in this world and continued to cause her suffering. The, Witcher in the Witcher's inter intervention helped Iris what had happened helped Iris accept what had happened to her and her husband. When he asked for the rose, she agreed to give it to him, knowing this would put a final end to her pain and suffering and also her very existence. Oh, 
I mean, so it sounds like she wasn't happy with him anymore. She wanted to dissolve their marriage. He killed her father and said, no, you can't leave me like that. And that it's not that easy to leave me and then left her anyway. Like he just, he, mm, okay. Lots, lots of problems. So let's see. Maximilian proceeded to show his brother mobility the time of his life. So once upon a time, Ge old Garrett fell hopelessly in love with Iris, a beautiful young lady from a well-off family. Her parents accepted his proposal marriage and all seemed set for a happy ending when a storm of misfortune suddenly broke over the Von Everett family. Hmm. Uh, a chain of bad decisions and a few years of bad harvest had left the once wealthy family deeply in debt. The Bersodis purchased this debt and with their brutal enforcement of its terms drove the Von Evericks into utter bankruptcy. After this, Iris's parents changed their mind about their daughter's futures, revoking their approval of Ogierd and betrothing Iris to an Ophiri prince who had come to study in Oxenford out of desperation. Ogier turned to Master Mirror and soon went back his coin, influence, and most importantly, his betrothed. All seemed well until he discovered his wishes had unwanted side effect. His heart was slowly hardening into stone. Now the Witcher was on the verge of bringing the pact between Ogierd and Master Mirror to completion. Did this mean everything would soon be as it once was? Geralt was not so sure. One question kept nagging him. What was that something very personal Gontir Odim intended to collect from Olgierd? Yeah. So, the black cat and dog. Later, when Geralt encountered Iris von Everick's memories, he learned Olgierd had summoned the otherworldly dog and cat to keep his wife company in his absence. I mean, she did say she wanted a dog and a cat, but I don't think she meant it this way, Olgierd. <laughs> An idea only a man with a heart of stone could have imagined working. The two creatures remained loyal to Iris even after she died and transformed into an enraged ghost, but they never loved her and felt no sympathy for her fate. For such feelings did not form a part of their nature and did not reside in even reside in even the darkest corners of their souls. In the end, the strange dog and cat regained their longed for freedom when Iris von Everett gave Geralt the Violet Rose, thereby ending her existence. With their lady gone, the dog and the cat service ended, and they were free again at long last. This is just a whole world of unhappy endings here, isn't it? Um, let's see. Scenes from a marriage. Here we go. So with two wishes down and one more to go, I feel like I've read that already. So Olgierd's abandoned, abandoned residence was haunted by the ghost of his wife, Iris von Everick, or more accurately by deadly spectral emanations coming from her dormant spirit. Geralt had to overcome many obstacles before finally awakening Iris's ghost from her tortured sleep so he could talk to her about the Violet Rose. After he did so, he traveled to the world of ghost imagination to revive memories repressed within and defeat the embodiment of Iris's fears. In short, it was one of Geralt's more unusual adventures. At its end, our hero emerged from the imagined world with a very tangible rose in hand and ready to deliver to Olgierd in completion of his wish. The price of obtaining the rose, the ultimate end of Iris von Everick. Yeah. But she moved on. She passed on. That's that's not so bad, right? So whatsoever a man soweth, meet Olgierd's man at the Alchemy Inn. Well, we're gonna do that, but let's see. Is there anything else here? Oh yeah, and, and because I was reloading so much, like my movement got all glitched and I kept getting like stuck in the walls and I had to reload the whole game. And oh, it was just all sorts of problems today. All sorts of problems. I wonder, is there anything else to explore? I would not imagine so. It was just a door. Let's go upstairs. We had to come through here. I thought I could still hear noises. Nope. Yeah, I still hear weird haunting noises. Okay, so what I want to do is try to figure out how 
to break the statue. And I have a feeling I know how I probably need to do it, but I need to get out of here first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fast travel back to Oxenford, I think, and try to avoid where the quest is taking me. And I will meet you when I get closer to where I think I need to go to um, break the statue, and I will meet you there. That's what I'm trying to say very, very poorly. Well, I finally made it back to Oxenford, finally, and I'm gonna go into this armor here, and... Greetings again. So, you got a job for me, an interesting one. Yeah, I want you to show me your wares. Show me what you... And I want to dismantle, and I think, can I dismantle this, right? Item you, okay, let's try it. Items removed from inventory, a figurine. Items added to inventory was a will. So, okay, perfect. Well, I'm gonna sell some items real quick. So long. So long, okay. Let's see, did I get a new quest? Treasure hunts a dark legacy. Read the letter. While at Borsodi's auction house, Geralt bid a not insignificant sum on a strange figurine. It wasn't, it wasn't that significant, let's be clear. Why, you ask? Perhaps it was the fact, perhaps it was that famed wizard in intuition, for after dismantling the figurine, Geralt found he had also become the owner of a letter and a heavy ornate key. Oh, I don't remember seeing the key, but let's go to inventory, books, letter. Letter, letter, letter. Where is it? A will, actually. So Count Romelli's will. To Robert, my son, if you've received the figurine, it means your father has departed this veil of tears. I know we've had no contact for many years, but I hoped the contents of the chest opened by the key included within will in some small way compensate for all the lost time. You'll find the chest in the underground quarters of our family home, Arnskron Castle. Your loving father, Count Walter May Vermilly. Ooh. Search the ruins of Arnskron Castle. Which was out in the dead white woods or something. I have been there, so that should be easy to get to. Well, let's see. Uh, nearest fast travel is the harbor. Let's head there. What are you gonna sell ah. us? Anything? No, nothing? Oh. Okay, sorry. I'm so sorry, sir. Let's see. A break in the auction house. True. Boss claims no such thing occurred, but it were a security exercise. Best wears this Them side of the corpses corpses are. I don't honestly know, and I don't need to ask. <laughs> but the security ah. exercise. <laughs> That's funny. I want more of that, that stuff going on. Oh, I still got to level up. I'm meaning to do that and I keep forgetting. So, Arnskron Castle. Is this the one where the Leshen was at? Maybe? <laughs> Creepy monster noises. Okay, I have to go, I'm assuming down here again. Was it this locked door? No, we'd been in here before. I thought we'd been in all the rooms. Oh, okay. Really? That's... I mean, not to be petty, but that's it. <laughs> that's all. That's all we get. <laughs> okay. Well, the letter he discovered was Count Romilly's last will and testament. From it, he learned a treasure might be hidden in Arnskron Castle. Gerald set off to the eerie ruins of Arnskron Castle. The fam, the Romilly's family, the Romilly family's one-time home, and found a chest full of treasure in its crumbling underground passage. Well, I gotta say that's rather disappointing. I was hoping for a whole lot more, but. Oh well. 
so I think I'm actually going to pause here for today. I'm not actually sure how long this video is going to be because um, I'm not sure how much of my fight with the Old Gear Time 6 monsters is going to be. And honestly, it took me so long. I've been, I've been recording for like an hour and a half at this point. So I, I'm sure it'll be fine, but we'll be, we'll be at this point. So tomorrow, we're going to head back to Oxenford to go meet Old Gear Demand at the Alchemy Inn and we finished all three of the tasks so i imagine this we might be nearing the end of this dlc which is sad because i don't want it to end but it does have to end at some point so yeah that's my plan and we'll we'll go from there so as always thank you so very much for watching please do keep yourselves safe and i will see you again tomorrow with another new witcher 3 video Oh,